What's going on, Paisanos? V here, and today I have my Sky Striker deck profile I want to show you. Um, I think Strikers were really good this meta. I, I they didn't obviously lose anything. Uh, Imperial Order is probably one of the best cards to go against this deck, and now that it's gone, I honestly think a lot of players are just not realizing the fact that this deck's insane. <laughs> this deck's really good at breaking your opponent down and forcing them into a mid game, where a majority of players in the game right now don't want to go to. And I think this deck obviously has one of the best mid games in the game right now. Uh, I'm gonna go over the deck and then we'll go over the extra deck. I'm not gonna show the side I don't think it's worth it at the moment. Maybe I'll do another video later on showing the side But uh, we're gonna go over everything and I'll show you all my stuff about it. All right, so right at the gate We have um three sky striker ace ray. You definitely need her uh, Two rows once again at the moment. We're going three two some players like to play with fire and go three ray one rose But I personally like to go two rows just to guarantee you get that that uh, that summon off it's insanely important. Uh, opening hands without any of these means you're just not going to be able to play your deck. And it's insanely important to be as consistently as possible because that's what every deck now wants to do is be consistent as possible. So you're going to need this kind of lineup. Uh, obviously, with the new Scratch Tracker card coming out, um, we won't need uh, two rows. You will only need one rose. But until that moment happens, we are playing two. Uh, for the rest of the Striker spells, we have one Engage, uh, one Multi-Row, obviously a play set of Widow Anchor, uh, double um, shark cannon, um, one of one of these uh, drone hornet drones, uh, afterburners, and the field spell error zero. Some people are deciding to cut the field spell, um, and they're doing it because they want to make room for other cards. I think the field spell is really good still. I think a lot of players can, especially if you're going first, if you're forced to go first or you want to go first. I personally don't like going first, but in case you do, um, field spell plus ray, I mean, it's an extra free card, so it's definitely ideal. I do like the field spell a lot, and I, I think in any build of strikers I play, I, I usually keep it in. Uh, let's go over the hand shot portion. We had three ghost ogres. Um, so... One thing I want to talk about in this deck is the fact that I don't play Ash, and the reason why is because I want to play hand traps that are infinitely more impactful. Ghost Ogre arguably is one of the best hand traps in the game right now, and when you play against the whole Adventure Core, this card stops that. Like one card stops the entire Adventure Core. One card. That's Ghost Ogre. So why would you not want to play it? So it's definitely a great card. Uh, we also play three Joel and Lockboard. Once again, it's not just for adventures, but this is good against adventures. Uh, this card is good against a lot of decks in the game right now. A lot of decks have a huge issues in with Joel and Lockboard, and if they pass on a subpar turn. Once again, it's ideally what we want. We don't want our opponent popping off. We want our opponent making the subpar plays. So that's why we're going to be running these. Um, I also play two Effect Veiler. Um, the reason we don't play three, it's just really not needed. Uh, I think two is more than enough, to be honest with you. Uh, we do do the whole Crystal Neo fight of a combo in this deck, so that's why you need Valor. If it wasn't for that, I would play Ash. Uh, so that's for the hand traps. Uh, we also play uh, three Pot of Prosperity. So the unfortunate part about this deck is you're going to need Pot of Prosperity. It's like a must-have card for Strikers. There are builds that might get away with not playing it, but for the most part, if you're a Striker player, this just adds a level of consistency that the deck does, does have a problem struggling with. So I highly recommend three if you can't afford it. Um, we're also playing two Mystic Mine. So once again, I think what a lot of decks is, especially decks that play Adventures, they really lean heavily on the Adventure engine. And the thing about Mystic Mine, what makes it so good is the minute you, oh, let's say, ogre that part of the Adventure engine or shut it down in any way, shape, or form, Mystic Mime is actually live again, and when you play against PK Brave, you put this card on board, this card basically wins you game one by itself, so that's why I think it's still insanely important to play. I know a lot of players are starting to opt to play Mystic Mime side, but um, I think it's a really good card, you know? There's nothing wrong with going, like, summoning a, a, a Shizuku and going mine, or summoning Ray going mine. I know that might sound like a weird kind of productive kind of play, but you basically told your opponent, you get rid of this mine, or you're screwed. And once again, like I said, a lot of players that are playing uh, Brave are going to try to get rid of the mine. They're going to try to use the Draco to bounce the mine back to your hand so they can full combo. But if, they don't, if they're not able to do it, you basically shut them down with one card. Pretty good. Um, obviously, we have Reinforced Army, Upstart Goblin, Terraforming. These are one-ofs. Uh, Pot of Avarice, these are all our one ofs. I still think Pot of Avarice is really good. If you run any amount of decent amount of hand traps, one Pot of Avarice is, is actually really good. Uh, if you can proc a uh, hand trap, you can have Pot of Avarice live turn one. Um, proc two hand traps, even more, the, even more the spicier. Um, Terraforming is our third Mystic Mime or the field spell. I think this is we play two different field spells. Mystic Mime is kind of a shoe for either or. Um, and then Upstart and Rotor, pretty much, you know, generic at that point. Another thing I'm playing that's a little bit different is Tuber Gekis. So, once again, I'm playing with the mentality of, 
our opponent has adventurers, let's say, because that's a lot of players are going to be playing PK. You're going to play a lot against a lot of them, and you can say, well, the you know we could put in lightning storm, and don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but this isn't a hard once per turn. You open two light regekis, you're going to resolve that. When they do it against sword souls, they have one I'm going to get. You bait that out, or you clean their board out. You clean the board of regeki. You are bringing your opponent to mid game once again, where they don't want to be. And that's the idea and mentality you gotta have when you're playing this deck. Um, you can even argue to play three Regeki. I think two's more than enough. You really just want to see one. You could bake the other one out, especially if you have Widow Anchor. So it doesn't matter if that you used to go out in, in that instance. Um, even if your opponent does have a Brave Monster. Let's say they did a full Brave combo and everything like that, and you opened up a Ghost Ogre. Once again, a little ruling update: the Brave, in order to negate, has to shuffle itself back in the deck. If you Ogre it, that negation doesn't happen. So, pretty important. I think it's something that a lot of players um, kind of forgot about. And I think it's something that's uh, pretty good. So, uh, yeah, Ghost Longer Star Rabbit is a pretty good card. Uh, and Regeki itself, like I said, is a card to clean your opponent's board out. You clean your opponent's board out, you're bringing them in mid game. And that's where Strikers does the best at. So, definitely try Regeki out if you haven't tried it out. I think it's an insanely good card. I might even up it to three, but two is definitely really good. We're also playing two Fusion Destinies in the whole Fusion Destiny package. Obviously, this is just, it comes with playing Strikers. Some Striker players are trying to cut this, but uh, I think it's really good. Oh, let me say one more thing, by the way, about Shark Cannon. So, if people are starting to play only one Shark Cannon, which I think is insanely incorrect. Uh, we have Scythe Lock in this game now, and if your opponent Scythe Locks you, you're kind of screwed. Ideally, what your opponent's going to do is obviously uh, activate DPE, pop Scythe, through all that little jazz, and then you just Shark Cannon it away. In fact, you can play two Shark Cannons, and Shark Cannon and, you know, t on the opponent's turn and take their scythe. Guess what happens when you do that? <laughs> Fun times for you, not much for your opponent. Uh, and, of course, we have, we have three. They're going to be ones. It's still a phenomenal card. Going second. One thing, I'm playing with a lot of PK Brave players mentality in my, in my mind. Uh, they play, their deck's heavily Warriors. So if this is really good against them. Really good against Swords as well. You, put them, you kind of put them on better habit. Um, so I think this is a really good card in the game. And especially since uh, a lot of players... Are, 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 I mean, are trying to have a dominant turn one and we're trying to play mid game. This is one of the best cards to do. If you, we, if we are somehow forced to go first and we open this, we're gonna, pro we're gonna pretty much force our opponent to go to mid game. Uh, I just want to say a big shout out to um, uh, um, Smart TCG for this beautiful field center. This is a Kagari field center and uh, look at that. Look how cool that is. This is also a uh, Kagari field center that has a QR code. So you just move your phone over here and it loads you up right into Yu Gi Oh! Um, the Yu-Gi-Oh app, I have a program to do that. I might have a video showing how to program this, some people keep asking, but uh, these things are absolutely amazing. This is a Kagari one, it looks absolutely stunning, and I'll put it over here for, for now to, it's actually really, okay, there we go. Uh, I'll put it over here for now, and we'll, and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison for Kagari afterwards. Um, I am playing three Shizuku, uh, I'm playing three Rei, a uh, Kagari, uh, Rei in a machine, uh, two Ayade, one Kaina, and one Zeke. This is kind of standard ratio for strikers. Some people want to play a third Kagari, uh, Hayate, and cut down Shizuku, and that's kind of preference at that point, depending on how you want to play it. I personally like two Ayade, but once again, that's play a preference. Um, so that's whatever. Uh, for the rest of the hand, other stuff and extra extra cards, uh, one Verde Anaconda and one uh, Shoya Phoenix. Once again, nothing too spicy. Um, and then after that, we're going to go with Crystal Needle Fiber, uh, Selene, and Axis Cold Talker. Once again, that's why we play Effect Veiler to do this. Some players are opting to go into a um, Nightmare Phoenix, which isn't a bad card, don't be wrong. It's not terrible. It's just that if you're going to Nightmare Phoenix, okay, but like... I feel like these cards are more consistent. With Strikers, you can't kill as easily. And with these cards, you can kill. Obviously, you need this for the DPE part. And I think DPE is really good in Strikers. Like, insanely good in Strikers. But this is going to help you kill. And once we know our opponent's board is broken, we just do this and kill them. So, why would you not want to do that? Especially since we're running Regekis. Um, we can go ahead and Regeki their board. Uh, play through the back row. And then kill them with a, um, Axis Code Talker. So, I really think it's uh, a, you know the, probably the best way to do Strikers at the moment. Once again, I know there's a lot of different builder strikers. I know, I know a lot of players are trying to play a lot of cute and different things. And I don't think there's any wrong answers, to be honest with you, with Sky Strikers. It's all the mentality you have as a player when you're playing this deck. Are you wanting to be more aggressive going first? Or are you thinking, okay, I need to get my opponent in mid-game. I, I need to play uh, you know, certain hand traps to make, ensure the fact that my mid-game is not terrible. So I'm going to play things like ogre and draw and don't get me wrong i think ash was a great hand trap but ogre and draw are going to be those cards that's going to make your opponent rethink their game state this is going to make them play at a suboptimal game state and that's where you're going to take the most advantage of um you know playing cards like um 
uh, a shark cannon and widow anchor obviously just like the bread and butter of this deck but you gotta understand the fact that these cards do so much more than just you know just banish a card and just negate a card they actually help you win games a lot faster and i think a lot of players give it credit for um and yeah i, I think you know you still gotta play two rows not crazy about rows but I do think you got to play two of them because it is definitely one of the um the, you know one of the best ways to be as consistent as possible when you are playing sky strikers which you need to be because every other deck in the meta is consistent um so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna answer these questions before anyone asks in the comment section um these sleeves are by imperium duelist um these are the um so there's the blue ones in this from um, demon slayer this is the demon slayer sleeves uh these look really i mean absolutely amazing let me see i get a better look at that <laughs> these look absolutely amazing i mean gorgeous um so that's those uh the back i thought the, i thought the name of these sleeves uh they're from a, a company uh you're playing my .com. it's their sleeve so it looks absolutely gorgeous and the field center is from smarttcg.com links will also be in the bottom by the way i have promo codes as well in case you want to save some money uh and you want to get one of these i mean this is a heavy metal metal field center and it's a smart field center you know you take it you put it by your phone and it loads up your um, it loads up your your app or whatever app you program it to, and it's a heavy field. It's it's I mean it's made of metal. It's a heavy field center, and uh, it's it's made for striker players. So if you're a striker player, you want to get all the gear. There you go. Also, this deck box is also by Imperium Duel. I mean, uh, not Imperium Duelist. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm about to say Imperium Guard. Imperium Duelist is a great deck box, and it's what I use to hold all my stuff. Um, I believe they have a blue one on their website right now, so definitely go check that out. And uh, yeah, comment down below. Let me know what you th thought about this deck. Uh, definitely go and try it out, and definitely try out Regeki, because like I said, I think Regeki is one of the best cards for Sky Strikers. Obviously, it's a, it's a spell in Graveyard, but it's a way to clean your opponent's board out, which this deck can do. We're not playing it in a meta where we're having three or four army in the gates. We're playing in a meta where our opponent at most has one, maybe one. And in a deck like Sky Strikers, when you go ahead and Regeki, and they go like, oh, I'll negate. And then you could turn around and go Widow Anchor. That board's getting cleaned, and that's a big deal for us. Uh, obviously, if, if we go Regeki in the gate, we can also go Mystic Mind, look at our opponent and go, and now you're screwed. So we have a lot of options, a lot of things we can do. Obviously, uh, I know a lot of players are going to uh, test out a lot of things for Sky Strikers, but I do think this is one of the best decks in the meta. I think this deck, this deck you know, once you do, grab your opponent to mid-game, uh, the game's basically over for a lot of people. So, once again, comment down below. Let me know what you about this deck. Uh, big shout to uh, um, Pyramid Duelist and SmartCC.com. I mean, this is absolutely the best gear. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you around, Paisanos.